So what are the different uh, parallel architectures? So there is a shared memory architecture. We have already spoken about this, but let us revisit it once again. So what happens in this case is, you have a large memory unit. And you have multiple processors which are accessing this. So this is analogous to what we just discussed, right? Where all of you were trying to use the blackboard. The blackboard was nothing but your memory, right? And you were trying to use the blackboard to communicate with each other. So these processors typically do not directly talk to each other except via the memory, right? The memory acts as their communication mechanism serves for uh, communication purposes. This is the shared memory architecture and the other architecture that we commonly come across is the distributed memory architecture. And what happens in the distributed memory architecture is that you have a processor with its own memory. Right? So there are multiple processors, each one of them having its own memory. And now you need to connect these processes up, the processor memory units up. And how do you do that? Via some interconnection network. Okay, so this is your interconnection network. The processor actually needs to use an I.O. interface. Right, so typically on any processor, right, you have the processor, you have the memory, and then you can communicate with I.O. devices like the printer or the Ethernet or, or any other I.O. Right? The files, the disk, right? All of that happens to go via the I.O. interface, right? So if you want to perform any I.O., it needs to go via the I.O. interface. Okay, so similarly, the interconnection network is connected to the I.O. interface. So if you want to basically communicate with another processor, you have to go via the interconnection network, which is behaving like an I.O. device. So what is the major difference here? The major difference is that if I want to perform a load operation, if processor 1 performs a load operation, it can access any location in this entire memory, right, just using a load operation or similarly store some value. It can access memory, any location of the memory using normal load store instructions, right, the normal instruction set works. Whereas in this case, as far as its own memory is concerned, it can use normal load store operations, the normal instructions work just as they do. But if it wants to communicate with or, or get data or store data to the memory of another processor, which is remote over here, right, it cannot do that using a normal load store instruction. It has to perform an I.O. instruction. It has to actually write data to this device, which is the interconnection network. And that has to be read over here and understood by somebody over here, maybe the processor, which needs to then fetch data from its local memory, so put it back onto the network device, and then it is read by processor 1. Fetching data from remote memory is not an instruction. Okay? It, it's a proper procedure that has to be executed where you write a request onto the I.O. device, okay, and it has to be sent to the other processor, it has to be received by the other processor and it has to then deliver the data, pick up the data from its local memory, put it on back onto the uh, network and then this processor has to pick it back from the network, okay? So as you can expect, performing memory operations in a distributed memory architecture is expensive, right? You, you, if you are going to remote memory, if you are going to local memory, it is not an issue, right? In a shared memory architecture, going to any location in the memory is the same thing. 